Hello everyone, this is Gamer 4 here with another challenge run video. And this time this run will be focused on the coil shield. The coil shield is pretty much a plank of wood with a snake glued onto it. It also deals the poison status effect and the viper bite skill can clip through walls. But enough about the weapon itself, let's get this run started. We choose our class, name our character, choose our keepsake, load into the game, watch as people decide to do ritualistic suicide for some reason, Get screeched at by my what I mean the intro boss. Hello Vare. A quick punch for good luck as always. And a kick to show how much we hate him with a burning passion. Quickly receive our horse. And summon bell just in case. Get the golden foul foot that's close by. Hear the cries of those who are maidenless. And on our way to Kaelid, we get the Strength Knot Crystal Tear, Me Alexander, and Big D. Get our Wondrous Physic Flask. Go to Fort Height, get the left half of the Dectus Medallion. And make our way to Fort Faroff to get the second half of the medallion. Miss Jump and Die an Unfortunate Death. Get the Radagon Source Seal and die to a tiny rat instead of the huge one. Now we make our way around Stormvale. Damn, the landscape of this game is incredible. Get slapped to death. Sneak around the dragon and get the academy key. Use the teleports to reach the north side of the lake. Use the deck this lift to reach Altus Plateau. To make our way to Mount Gilmer to get most of what we need to officially start the run. Do a bit of grave robbing. And get the somber six smithing stone. And on our way up we visit Volcano Cave. To get the weapon of this run, the coil shield. Now with our main weapon in hand we make our way to Volcano Manor. Get our room key from a nice and unsuspicious looking lady. Get our first perfume model and open the illusionary wall. Make our way through the area by jumping through the left side and rolling on top of the lava. Get our somber 5 smithing stone. Bring up the lava bridge. And after a few failed attempts, make the volcano manor jump skip. And get the Somber 7 stone by sneaking around the Abductor. Now off to Dragon Barrow. To bully a Scarab. But get pushed off instead. This time we take it out the old fashioned way. And get our Somber 8 smithing stone. Now we head to the low ground and get our somber 9 stone. We farm a giant ball for a bit and watch a tiny deer get crushed. On the way to EG for upgrades we get the jellyfish shield. Buy the rest of the missing somber stones from him and level up our shield to plus 9. With our run weapon ready for use we go to high road cave. Challenge the boss and use the snake to bite his legs. To get the blue dancer's charm. Now we go to the Lux ruins. Eliminate the demi-human queen. And get the Ritual Sword Talisman for more damage up. Level up a bit. Insert two keys to gain access to Sweetwater Cave at the bottom of Mount Gilmer. Dread through the poison water. Get absolutely dunked on. Reach the Kindred of Rot. Die to the same bullcrap attack five times in a row. 
show these rot worshippers that our venomous poison snake is better. And get the Kindred of Rot Exultation Talisman. Now to the Shaded Castle we go. Deal with an annoying deprived perfumer. Wait for him to stop attacking for at least one second to go around him and get the perfume bottle. We then sneak around the Clean Rot Knight and get the Valkyrie's Prosthesis. Go get the perfume bottle that is close to Altus Highway Junction Grace. Get the perfume bottle at the Perfumer's Grotto. Go back to the Shaded Castle to get the Perfumer's Cookbook number 2. Go to the Perfumer's Ruins and get two perfume bottles there. Head to the Swamp and Caleb to get another perfume bottle. Make a giant land squirt rock bomb. Go and fight Commander O'Neill for his spear. Bash his summon spirits heads in. Get the boss stuck on the terrain. And use the magical clip through wall snake attack to deal damage at a safe distance. Get interrupted by the no fun allowed gig squad and kite for another attack. Eventually gain the opportunity to hit him. And with the commander defeated, we get the commander standard and the unalloyed golden needle. Now we give the needle to Gowry. Reload the area and get the needle back. Give the needle to Millicent and tell her to stab herself with it. See? Now she's strong and healthy. Now we go talk to her at Gowry Shack. Talk to her again near the Earth Tree Gazing Hill Grace to give her an arm. Kill the Bloodhound Knight for his claws at Volcano Manor. Level up. Go into the rot infested abandoned cave and Bloodhound step through the rot. Now we deal with the Clean Rot Gank Knight. After that stress inducing fight, we get the Golden Scarab Talisman for more rune gain. Now with our near max rune gain buff, we hit the Disabled Dragon outside of Fort Faroff. For a whopping amount of 120k runes. Time for a big level up. Now that we level up, it's time to farm for budding cave moss at the perfumer's grotto. Altus bloom at the perfumer's ruins. And the land octopus ovary at the temple quarter grace in order to make the blood boil aromatic. With the limited amount of Arteria Leaf we can find, and the only way to farm them is after Morgoth, we are limited in making our drug. Now we buy the crafting kit from the Santa Merchant, pick up Flame Grant Me Strength at Fort Gale, buy the Finger Seal from the Twin Maiden Husks, deal with an NPC Invader near Murkwater Cave, now we speak with Yira, deal with Patches, Buy Margaret Shackle from him at Volcano Manor. With the sufficient amount of buffs and drugs inside of my character system, we fight Margaret the Dramatic Omen. With the use of the Shackle, we get two big hits in. Trade some blows. And with the poison taking its toll, Margaret falls, and we get our second talisman slot. We now level up. Sneak around the back of Stormvale Castle. And unfortunately explode. 
try to hit the knight through the wall, but I can't. So we get locked into a room with a very angry knight. Kill him real easy. Hit the backstabber through the wall. Assassinate the halberd knight. Use the roof to skip most of Stormvale Castle. Also, good thing the big guy is slow. Use the snake versus the stormhawks. And now we make our way to the underbelly of the castle. Watch a poor guy jump to his death. Now we fight the giant tree snake. And with the wacky worm eliminated, we get our golden seed. And with everything noteworthy to me done at Stormvale, now we fight Godric. And God, he really needs to cut his nails. The strategy for Godric was just dodge and hit. Simple as that. And now it's time to go to the Rose Church to do Vare's quest. Wait for about 40 minutes because it was like 3 a.m. in the morning. Switch locations and finally invade people. Just to leave immediately. And now we go to the four belfries and take the second one from the top to teleport to the starting area of the game. Deal with the grafted scion. And after trading blows after blows and nearly dying. We get the Maiden's Blood that's drenched in sacrificial death. Deal with Invader Vike as a bonus at the Church of Inhibition with the power of Stretchy Snake. Now we go back to Vare and get our fingernail pulled out with the power of Telekinesis. Use the Night Metal that he told us not to use in front of his face. And now with us being in Mogwin's Palace, we quickly make our way to the Farm Grace. Then make our way to the top and receive no blood loss damage for some reason. Sneak behind the mass meeting and get the somber ancient dragon smithing stone. Upgrade our shield finally to plus 10. D has been murdered again. How unfortunate. Now we meet up with Blythe. Go beat up a prisoner in his jail cell. He tried to teleport behind me but the snake predicted that. Now we get rewarded for our bloody deed. And with that done we can get the carrion crest talisman from EG. Run through Carrion Manor. Get purposely killed for a flask refill. So we can face the spirit of Loretta all set and ready. With Loretta's spirit defeated, we quickly say hi to Ronnie and go into the Siofra River to just say hi to Blythe. Also look at how angry the locals are. They are seething mad. With that over and done, now it's time to farm. And after watching a blood album, Eric do flips around me. I eventually get 1 million runes from the farm. And go sell the spare gold runes I had to the Santa Merchant. For a huge level up. Now we go to Rhea Lucaria and get greeted by the welcome wagon. Eliminate the Alabaster Lord. And anything else in our way. Sneak around the nerd study session. 
use Snake on the one that followed me up. Now it's time to face Radagon's pet wolf. And after a few good snake hits, it goes down. On the way to the main boss, we easily dodge the rolling ball trap. Deal with the carrion knight protecting the elevator. Now we face off against Renala. We quickly take out their glowing crawling students. Buff up in a safe spot. Take out the last glowing one and lay it on Renala. And with Renala being unable to take on our snake, we go on to phase two. And with just doing the good old usual dodge and attack, Renala is defeated. I do a quick level up and get our third talisman slot. Go to Red Main Castle. Say hello to everyone there. How polite. Now after meeting everyone here, we face Radon. And after dying only two times fortunately, We fight him normally how any other melee character would. Get close and mentally prepare myself with my buffs for the fight. Get close enough to land at least a hit. And then start panic rolling when I get hit. And before letting the poison do him in, and let him pull me towards him to land the final hit, and Radon falls to our snake shield. With Radon finished, we watch a nuke hit Limgrave, level up, and then go back to the shaded castle to finish up the area. Die once to the boss. In the victory run, one attack literally faces through the boss. But at least the rest hits are on mark. The boss falls and we move forward. Now to gain access to the capital we need to sneak behind the draconic tree sentinel, buff up and start spamming the viper bite skill. And after a few more hits. And the sentinel falls off his horse and we have access to the capital. But we won't go to the capital just yet because first we're going to Necron. Face our copycat with a snake of his own. And after that intense battle of snakes. We light some fires around the forest, touch the glowing deer corpse. Witness a whole lot of bloodstains pop in out of nowhere. Now we fight the giant teleporting deer. And after biting the deer many times because of its capability to heal.
it goes down and onward we go to the aqueducts. There we challenge a crucible knight to see which one of us have the most bullcrap attack. But it ends in a draw. Get absolutely wrecked and get sent over the railing by the second one. Fight the Crucible Knight again, but this time away from any ledges. And win with the power of poison. Now we give these little brothers some big boy armor. Go inside the boss arena and now face the two gargoyles. Die to the first gargoyle. Then bait him off the cliff as revenge. Buff as quickly as I can. And then fight the second one normally. Had to attack the gargoyle right after it did its own attacks. And after getting vomited on, we both die, but the game gave me the victory. Do a quick level up. Go up the magical coffin ride. To reach the deep root depths. But before we move on, let's do a bit of backtracking. Miss a jump. Ignore the giant ball and its worshipper. Get the finger slayer blade and give it to Rani to get a weird upside down statue from her and now it's time to run through the royal capital rooftops snake bite and ambush her through the wall take out the gargoyle that's standing at attention ignore the enemies on the tree roots now we face the spirit of Godfrey and die two times in this battle. The main strategy I used for this battle was hitting him through the pillars with the Viper Bite, but with caution because his attacks can also face through solid objects. With Godfrey's spirit down, we get our final talisman slot. Level up my strength a bit. Then we go to Mount Gilmer and face the ulcerated tree spirit at the burnt miner Erd tree. And after a bit of dodging and weaving, The enemy is felled and we get the Cerulean Hidden Tier for 0 FP use when we buff up for a short time. Now we move onward to finish the Royal Capital. But before that we quickly deal with a Black Knife Assassin. I really hate how twitchy they are. Now we fight Morgoth. And with 3 deaths under my belt. We beat him by using the shackle, giving the opportunity of two free hits, denying his raining sword attack with the last shackle use, punish him while he's transitioning into phase two, hit him when he finally does his sword rain attack, then one final attack and let the poison finish him off. With Morgoth defeated, our stalker tells us to set a tree on fire, level up our muscles, not go to the mountaintop of the giants just yet, but instead help Yura with an invasion. 
Talk to Yura on the ground and finish the job for him. With the NPC defeated, we get the Purifying Crystal tier. Now that we have that Crystal tier, now it's time to fight Mogwin. And after dying 10 times to Mogwin, because I haven't fought him in a really long time, I finished his first phase by mixing in shield bashes with my viper bite attack, dodging and hitting him after. And second phase, oh boy. He ends up getting himself stuck. And then dies. Funny and quite lucky for us. After that interesting interaction, we go back to the capital and eliminate the tree guardian. Eliminate the crucible knight. And now down to the sewers with the docile rat that gets in the way. Get Mog's Shackle that I forgot to get. Get lost in the sewer pipes for a bit. Ignore the omen. And open the door. And the gate. Die due to ledge fall. Get slapped by a giant pot. And now we face the clone of Mogwin. Pretty easy because we already faced the real one. With Mogwin's clone defeated, we activate the secret stairs. Make our way down the platforming puzzle. Activate the secret entrance to Deep Root. Eliminate the tree mini boss that is there. And before we move on, we go into the Carrion Study Hall and flip it upside down with the statue. And completely forget that there's a pit right there. Attack through the walls to get the hands out of the way. Deal with the NPC guarding the area. With the Guardian down, we move forward and ignore the Godskin that's in the way and get the curse mark of death for Fia's questline. Now we go to Mia's location, go against her squad of champions, And the snake beats them all real easy. Hug her because this is for the quest guys, I swear. Get our life sucked. Also give her the mark of death. So now we can fight the lich dragon in the dream world. And die two times due to not paying attention. Yeah. 
and in the successful run, bite the dragon in the face and arms while trying to keep some distance away because staying under him can get us electrocuted. With the Lich Dragon down, we now get a weird looking baby as a reward. Watch as the new D has no chill. Looks like there's a naked maniac on the loose now in the area. After exploring the area a bit, I found a Crucible Knight I completely forgot existed. Buff up in safety. Eliminated, and we move forward. Time to write a coffin again. Afterwards, we loot the mini Ronnie that's in the coffin. Bother it by poking it in the face. Fight the giant realistic looking ants proceeding forward. Go down the elevator. Fight Invader Blythe. And here we show that the snake beats the wolf. Now we run through the lake of rot. Get the mushroom hat that I won't even use. Beeline from the grace all the way to the end. Level up. Damn, from Software really loves their coffins. Now we face Astel the giant nerd's rope from space. And just doing some viper bites to the face and arms. Unfortunately, we didn't get grabbed once in this fight. Estelle goes down in one attempt. And now we fight Ronnie's pet dragon. Kind of annoying to fight, but good thing it did a lot of stomps to allow me to attack it real easy. And its face is pretty easy to hit as well. And with the dragon down, I loot some starlight shards in the area, and we go get married. Watch as our new waifu, Leafu. With that just happened, we head to the windmill village, and take out the godskin that's there. Afterwards, we talk to Millicent, and now we finally head to the mountaintop of the giants. So we ignore the enemies on the way, use the medallion to ride the lift up, crossing the bridge without any problems, find Millicent up here, rush through the area, to reach Castle Soul, Make our way through the enemies, 
to challenge Commander Nail. First we deal with his spirit allies first, then die a frostbite, then we challenge him again, eliminate the spirits first, and now we deal with Nail. Nail only gave me one safe opportunity to attack, and that's when he rushes you with his spear. So when he does this, I dodge roll one extra time for distance, then Viper bites him for damage. Just far away enough not to get hit. With the last bite attack, Nail goes down, and we get the first half of the secret medallion. Now we go bother an old man to death for the second half. Accidentally fall and she's the omen killer boss with our through the wall snake. Now we go to the round table and get invaded. Eliminate the invader with the power of a literal snake. Level up a bit. And now we go and find a hole on the ground that lacks a giant friendly pot. Find the said pot taking a lava bath instead. And with Alexander's quest ready for the next phase, we now go to the lift and use the secret medallion that glows green instead of red. Make our way out of the tomb. Traverse the dense snowstorm. Find a group of enemies helping their friends stuck in the snow. Get to the grace at the destroyed town. Now we go back to the mountaintop of the giant to get more sacred tears and also kill an NPC invader that gets in our way. With that done, we go into the Evergaul. Get absolutely destroyed by paraplegic archers. We then fight back with the power of the clipping snake. Light the last flame. And now we have gained access to the Halig Tree. So now we make our way downward. Nope, nope, nope. And come face to face with the real Loretta. Most of her attacks leave her open to be punished. Like her glintstone phalanx or when she charges her weapon with magic. And with Loretta taken down, we level up. Do the elevator skip for instant access to Melania's boss room. Quickly touch the grace for later use. But before we challenge Melania, let's finish Millicent's quest. So we go back up and talk to her. And go through the area as one normally would. Bloodhound stepped through the rot. And now we go fight a rotted tree snake. Die a few times in the process. But we eventually get it stuck on a terrain and use the snake viper bite to kill it.
After that's done, we go back to Gallery to hear what he has to say. And then we ignore his request and side with Millicent. But because of this, we fail multiple times to the gank squad. But after so many tries, we finally succeed. So now we listen to Millicent's last words. Then we reload the area to witness sadness ahead. Go back to Gowry. Then we kill Gowry. And now we challenge Melania. And after dying once to her, I got her to her second phase and realized I had almost no more flasks to use. So I decided I'll come back later after Malekith. So we continue onward with the main story. Kill a giant's hand, and as usual, it wasn't worth it. And now it's time to fight Fire Giant. As one would normally fight Fire Giant, we just usually stick to his legs and Viper bite him as much as we can. And after ripping his own leg off to stop the snake venom, we continue the fight by baiting his melee attack so we can hit his weak spots. With Fire Giant down, we go to the forge. Watch Sin be committed by setting herself on fire. And now we reach Veromazula. Moving forward, we take out some of the beasts nearby. And while ignoring most of the enemies, we just run till we get the desired grace near the boss room. Now we face the Godskin duo. Died six times to this fight. And holy moly, I really hate this fight. Just eliminate one Godskin and it just respawns 30 seconds later. Anyway, the strategy for this fight was mostly playing around the pillars and focusing all the attacks towards the skinny Godskin. And the best time to attack as well is when the skinny one does a jumping attack. Because if far away enough, the boss does not do a follow-up, and so it's pretty safe.
and with those 20 minutes of annoyance over, we make our way through the area. Reach the lift that's blocked off by stone sword keys. And accept Alexander's challenge to duel. And after beating him with only two Viper Strikes, we receive the final damage up for the shield. Sell some golden runes to the Santa. We level up real quick. To fight a random crucible knight that's there. Run through Stormhawk and Electrical Hell. And now it's time to face off against the Draconic Tree Sutno that is guarding the way to Malekith. Unfortunately died two times. And we beat him in the third attempt. And for some reason his AI decided to just walk away for a few seconds for no reason. Now before we face Malekif, we go and lay our butt on a bunch of bloodstains. Get swallowed up by the storm. So we can face off against the Dragon Lord. With how long and somewhat swift our Viper Bite is, we can attack the dragon quite frequently from safety and recover movement quickly as well. Nearly all its electrical attacks give an opportunity to hit it. And when he starts shooting laser beams, I found it best to mad dash to the dragon, take a hit from his fire breath before it turns into a laser, and hit it while it's continuing the attack. With the poison taking its toll, plus the Dusax is slain in one attempt, we now go and fight Malika. And unfortunately, he cannot be cheesed very well through the pillars. So after dying three times to Malika, The strategy for the first phase was to dodge roll to the left side, then roll backwards whenever Malekith would try to stab me with his dagger, because this would put me far away enough so I can attack him without worrying about the follow up. In his second phase when he gets his edge armor and sword, the strategy now is to attack whenever he tries to overhead slam us.
With Malekith down, we free the Rune of Edge. And now is when we go back to face Melania for real this time. And after dying only one more time, surprisingly, and the strategy for Melania is to keep a certain distance away, to use the Viper Bite and hope that she doesn't decide to delete me with the Waterfowl Bands. And if she does do a Waterfowl Dance, it gives me the opportunity to get one free hit in. The second phase follows the same strategy as well, of keeping a certain distance away and not getting waterfowled to death. I was quite happy that it didn't take a lot of tries, and the Shard of Alexander really boosted our damage compared to when we didn't have it. Now onward to the Ashen Capital. Oh boy, time to deal with Gideon. And other than the magic comet that he loves to spam, he wasn't that difficult. With Gideon done for, we go onward to Godfrey. Dealing with the SmackDown Champion was a hassle. Godfrey's first phase is a bit annoying, but the second phase is what gave me so many problems. All of my 8 deaths came from that phase. First phase Godfrey is taken down by attacking him when he does his small overhead axe slam or any other slow attack. And for second phase, I died to the point that I started shield bashing whenever he dove for a grab.
with Godfrey down, we now have access to the final boss. But before we finish the game, we have one thing left to do. There's another snake in town, and there's only room enough for one main snake in this game. It is time to fight the God Devouring Serpent. And after dying like 8 times to this gimmick boss fight, and going a bit crazy trying to melee it inside of the lava. We go out to the Tower of Return, get ensnared by the trap, deal with the golem real quick, to get the blessed dew talisman. And afterwards we go to the Woodfolk Ruins to get the Icon Shield for some passive health regeneration from both of them. Now with my character having passive health regeneration, we go back to the Serpent and deal with him pretty easily. Just have to dodge left and right of the actual Serpent attacks and instantly respond with my own Viper Bite. With the first phase done, now we face Rykard. The very reason why we got health regeneration. Because this fight without the Serpent Hunter Great Spear is pretty much a complete endurance test. The only opportunity to attack I took was when he uses his Rancor attack, because it's the only time he moves his head forward and ranged for a Viper Bite. As for his sword attacks, just dodge and try to bait his sword stabs to delay his huge Rancor call. And when his stage-wide attack starts happening, it's time to run away from the skulls that start following you. Always keeping an eye on the ground for any eruptions on the floor. On the right card in case he attacks but also keeping somewhere close to him. The skulls will recover a bit of stamina while running. And when he starts charging up his sword, it's time to sprint to his side to avoid his attack. And the process repeats over and over till he reaches half health. At half health, the serpent becomes active again. And the strategy now is to bait his grab, dodge it, and instantly viper bite.
Holy moly, I almost died there. And after fighting him for about a whole 2 hours and 17 minutes, the one true snake wins and we are off to fight the final bosses. Now in this run, Radagon was the easier one of the two. And the Elden Beast was the cause of all my deaths. Died a total of 5 times to the Elden Beast. Now for the victory run. At this point I ran out of drugs, sorry, I mean blood boil perfume, and had to only rely on my buffs at the start. For Radagon, our attack window is when he charges at us with his hammer, when he tries to dive bomb us, He has three versions of the dive bomb, and only two of them are safe to attack. And lastly is when he does the triple hammer slam. I was able to hit him before and after the final strike. Now with Radagon down, we are at the true final boss. Elden Beast really loves to run away, so it's pretty much a running simulator boss battle. This time to attack it is whenever it finishes an attack. And when he spawns an Elden Homing Star, it's just time to run. But after a whole while of dodging and attacking, we have slain the Elden Beast and we have beaten the game using the Snake Shield, or more properly, the Coil Shield. Now for some afterthoughts. I honestly thought I wouldn't be able to beat the entire game with this shield. It was honestly more easier than I thought it was going to be. And the only hiccups in the run were the godskin duels because, of course, obnoxious boss design in my opinion, Godfrey's second phase because of how fast he can recover from his attacks, and the Elden Beast because, as always, it loves to run away from you. There was also Mogwin that gave me a bit of trouble with his second phase because I haven't fought that version in a while, and honestly I got lucky he got stuck when he was trying to dive bomb me, but instead got stuck. I don't know if anyone had the same thing happen to them. Oh, and also Rykard. I was honestly hopeful that there was no way to defeat him without using the gimmick weapon for the fight, or abusing status effects. But when I went in and easily beat his first phase, and learned how to dodge his attacks and when to attack him in his second phase, I knew that I had to at least try. And try I did. But damn, that was 2 hours and 20 minutes of a fight. 
The health regen helped a significant amount because the amount of downtime between me being able to actually attack him. I am also going to upload the raw footage of the fight as a separate video so look forward for that. Other than a few hiccups this was actually a pretty fun fight for me at least. And before I do my outro there is one more thing left to do. So we go to Mogwin's palace and invade Vare. And now we viper bite him to death. With Vare gone, it is time to end the video. Oh, and please send suggestions for future challenge runs. I am very grateful for the feedback my viewers are giving. And it's also nice to read the comments you guys are putting out. Anyway, this has been Warnock Gamer 4 and thank you for watching and commenting on my videos. Thank you for watching this video and make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe and click the bell notification for alerts when I post a new video. And thank you for watching my previous videos as well. Later.